Good Times Magazine, the magazine for the rich and fashionable, shallow and hedonistic people of Pakistan that have absolutely no basis in our culture. We look to you for guidance in philosophy. I've been wondering about something for a long time, but no one has really been able to quench my thirst for knowledge, for wisdom. And I write to you hoping you will give me the answer. When people have these huge charity balls in Karachi, Lahore and Islamabad where everyone is so fashionable, and so much money is spent on the food and decor. How much of that charity money actually goes to charity? I hope you'll explain this to me, because I really need to know. Yours sincerely, Fasi. Hi Fuzzy, this is Good Times, the magazine for fashionable and rich people. Fuzzy. Do you have any idea how much it costs to raise one of these balls and how much hard work we have to do to arrange one of these events? Before going to these parties, I have to go to either Nabila's or Diplex. I have to go to Bubbly for my hair. Can you believe that? It costs, it takes two days for an appointment these days. I probably go to Nabila sometimes just like Ms. Mardu, you know. And Tarek is so busy nowadays, he doesn't even give me some time now. 
Let's say if I raised 1 lakh rupees from a charity ball, 80% goes to all the caterers and all the suspicious drink manufacturers and stuff. 10% of that actually goes to us because you know we did so much work in makeup and stuff, okay? And 2% of that goes to some music DJ that we hired from Arab Emirates, something like that. You know, we also have to dance our feet just to raise money, you know? And the remaining goes to all those poor people. It's not as easy as you think it is. If you think it is easy, just come over here and do our job, okay? Don't just sit there in the shower and whine, okay? Look, I gotta go, alright? My Diet Pepsi is getting hot, alright? I gotta go. Kiss, kiss. Welcome back to another 15 second intellectual film of the week which is on hiatus for a small time. The film, uh, well it's the first time I've been a model in one of these films. It's by this Japanese director, Barbecue Howard Hirosawa. And uh, I hope you like it, it's very poignant. That was a magnificent film. It's difficult because I'm part of it, but one of the things that I really enjoyed about what the intentions were of the director was that, you know, it's a film about the self-concocted ideologies that we choose to adopt, but sometimes in making them, they go out of control and became so extreme that they become hard to swallow. And ultimately, this film is basically about extremism and how, once cooked, becomes hard to digest. On the second Jazz I Am Awards, Atif met Bohar of Jal. It was a heartwarming moment for most because they hugged each other, but actually if we looked at the rules of psychoanalysis, we discover that Atif Aslam had very hostile intentions that he just couldn't fulfill because of the number of witnesses out there. Notice how he points the award. It is pointed towards the stomach and back of Gohar hoping that it will break through the skin, ultimately puncture the lungs, decompress it and collapse on his heart. Other than that, they seemed quite affectionate to one another. Intellectual property rights have been very low on the radar in Pakistan. And there was one incident last year that put it right up there on the top of everyone's radar screens. The acrimony that was found between Atif Aslam and Gohar fueled a lot of speculation, but both have since actually emerged to be formidable entities in their own right. We have a chance and we're talking to the vocal powerhouse that is Atif Aslam. The only singer who watches On The Fringe, by the way. So, we're here with Atif Aslam. Yes, and he's just played a show and it's something like 2.30 at night. And we're outside Pizza Hut and we're here to talk about him. And uh, Atif is the only person who's ever really watched the show. Which means you've got a lot of free time on your hands, basically. Yes, I have. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> <laughs> nobody watches the show. But, you know, just, just to start off, are, are you tired about questions about Jal and you and how it all started off? I'm sick and tired. You're sick and tired <laughs> yes. of it. All right. <laughs> so we we're just gonna touch on that. Go ahead, no problem. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't mind. Okay. I mean, are you working on your second album? Not yet. I believe um, I'm just doing the concerts and everything. Okay. And now I'm planning to do the international tours. All right. And after eight or nine months, I'll definitely start working. So do you realize that at some level, everyone is waiting for both the second albums? It's going to be a judgment of creativity on yes, both parts. no doubt about it. So does I, that put pressure on you? Because the first album is now, let's just say, it's out there. Everyone has I, I think it's not a pressure on me. Uh -huh. uh, I believe uh, what I want to create, what I want to compose, I'll compose that. Right. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a mood to uh, spoil my music, the quality. Right. This time I'm really working for that. 
So are you planning on re-editing the first take, the first album and just all further copies at least be? Uh, not at all, not at all. I think uh, it's, uh, it's brilliantly done uh -huh. uh, by the musicians. It's brilliantly done um, uh, by someone who has mastered the album and uh, everyone has done his job. Right.